other to have going into this match. Cannot wait to see where their head is at. It'll be Landorus, Ogre Pond, Wellspring for James, Landorus, and Rillaboom for Brady. By the way, there's no speed control in this matchup, so all the Pokemon are, there are similar Pokemon, depends on how they are trained and how those speed tiers interact, which means priority attacks are going to be even more important. But right now, for James, leading his Ogre Pond on his side, very crucial to try to redirect attacks away. I don't know if you want to give away your Terrestrialization early on, because it help you against Landers, but makes it even worse against Rillaboom. Well, fake out into the Ogre Pond at this point. Sure, moving things away is nice, but you also want to make sure that you're putting on some pressure onto Brady. Make sure the substitute won't go on for free as he says to set that up for the first turn. Lander is free to do so this time around. Rillaboom going to be taking the brute force of the hit that time with the sludge bomb. And that's the assault vest coming in clutch yet again for Brady. He's trained his team well, knowing that it's more important to have extra special defense to endure those sludge bombs since Landers is such a big threat. Now it is on the field yet again. You can try to go for a grassy glide or even try to have some pivoting with a U-turn because your substitute being set up, that's essentially a big glaring target for James to say, I have to target into that position to get rid of the substitute, which could potentially leave Rillaboom free to try to pivot around with U-turn. And you definitely don't want to make sure that this Rillaboom is unchecked at any point. And for Brady, you want to make sure that James doesn't follow down the same path as you in setting up this Landorus for free. James definitely has offensive pressure on his end too with that Ogre Pond, being able to fire off a powerful Ivy Cudgel. But first, it's going to be Grassy Glide into the Landorus. Start dealing some damage. Ivy Cudgel be hitting into the Rillaboom. Not very effective hit. And that is going to be Rillaboom sticking around and Sludge Bomb now into the Landorus to deal some additional damage. It's going to hide back behind its substitute, but still one more amount of attacks that'll be into the Rillaboom again. Smart play by Brady, knowing that Rillaboom is the slowest Pokemon on the field currently, that by the end of the turn, it would be knocked out. So you might as well get some boosted damage from the Grassy Glide, bringing James's Landers down to under half HP with that double target. Now you have a free switch into this. It looks like Incineroar. We see Chien Pao as the fourth Pokemon in the back. If you bring Incineroar in on that slot, you can fake out the uh, Landorus, which means it can't try uh, to match with its damage on James's end, or you can try to stop the Ogre Pond uh, Wellspring from trying to follow me. Notably, though, the double attack into the Rillaboom means that the Landorus does get to keep its substitute for this time around, anticipating potentially a swap into a Chi and Pao, break the Sash, or just be able to deal a bunch of damage into a potential Incineroar swap in here. So now Landorus this point, you still have to, to deal with, and Xi'an Pao heavily threatens the Pokemon in the opposing end here, being swapped in this turn. That sort of ruin means that uh, at any point, we know Sucker, Sucker Punch would be enough to knock out the lander since it's very low on HP, but potential Ice Attack into the Ogre Pond is going to do a lot of damage as well. The Sucker Punch is not necessarily uh, a free click this turn, since James can try to follow me it away, but at least with Chien Pao having the Focus Sash here, you know it's going to be very difficult. Unless you hit into a Spiky Shield and break the Sash, it's going to be difficult to knock out on this turn, because if you target on Chien Pao, you're still not breaking Brady's sub. Well, as well, Chan Pao, actually speedy, could have just gone for it anyways, but this time around, it will be the Protect, as it will be Ogre Pond to hit into the lander as well. Horn Leech, get a little help, like, we'll just, you know. Fired back into the Ogre Pond, super effective hit, and that is going to be clean KO at this point. That's the tough spot that Brady puts his opponents in. If you don't terastalize, you're weak to Sludge Bomb, but if you do, then you're gonna have you're gonna have a harder position against the other Pokemon. Rillaboom was knocked out though, so Rillaboom would have been the biggest threat against Ogre Pond, Wellspring terastalizing, so now James is gonna have to rely on the rest of his team. The Rillaboom of his own, at least that you have a fake out here to break Chien Pao's Focus Sash, but just like we saw on the prior turns, if you target down the Chien Pao that leaves Landorus to try to click a substitute as well as the option of Terra Ghost. We saw this earlier on in the tournament. If you Terra into a Ghost type, that fake out will make you'll be immune to the fake out and you'll be able to attack normally. It's also a telegraphed Terra though, so you can go for it and just play it safe or you can anticipate that maybe James could go for it. Since you protect the last turn around though, it could feel even safer from James to just go for the fake out. Kind of force the respect coming out from Brady in this turn. 
Landorus is going to be swapping out this time around, so we'll get to see the final Pokemon for James. It'll be that Gouging Fire. Gouging Fire, also if covering the potential Sucker Punch, we know that Brady didn't go for it, but Sucker Punch would have knocked out the Landorus, so now Gouging Fire wouldn't have taken any damage if he targeted that slot. Well, here is going to be the terrestrialization here in game one of our grand finals, that Chien Pao into the ghost type. You can see James nodding his head over on his head. Is this acknowledging what Brady has done and calling that fake out? Or did James make the prediction over on his end? We'll have to wait one more animation as he's also going to be pulling out the Trasalization, that Rillaboom, into the Fire Terra type. It's always so dramatic when both players Terrastalize on the same turn because there's so much time in between the turns to know, did he make the right call? They go into the Landorus in dead. So Landorus won't be able to act in the Icicle Crash. The Terra Fire to account, but it's going to be a miss nonetheless. Oh, that's a tough turn for Brady. Gets no damage on the field. Gouging Fire makes it onto the field for free without taking any hits. And you have used your gotcha in game one. You used the Terra Ghost calling fake out, but James was too smart for it and targeted down the landers. We know that Incineroar, or we can see that Incineroar is the last Pokemon on Brady's side. So James does not have to be worried about potential defiant boosts that would be stopping him from clicking break and swipe. Shampao swapping out at this point. Incineroar being brought in a round of Intimidate for the Gouging Fire and the Rillaboom to try and lower the amount of damage that they can do on this turn around. Of course, the Gouging Fire, if it doesn't want to go on the offensive, can take the opportunity to try and set that attack back up with a Howl, especially with Brady. Passive turn is going to be protecting that Landorus, making sure it's safe from the Grassy Glide coming out from the Rillaboom. Over on James' end, it will be that Howl for him and his partner, Pokemon. That is going to be one stage of increased attack, bringing both of these back to neutral. Yeah, that helps both of those Pokemon on James' end. Grassy Terrain does end, unfortunately, because I was going to say, if you have the Howl boost and Grassy Terrain to boost the damage on your Grassy Glide, could be enough to knock out the Landorus. But as we see, it's currently sitting at a pretty much 50% HP. So I don't think without the Terrain boost, Grassy Glide would be enough to knock it out. And we know James does not have the assault vest, right? Uh, it is it is the uh, mirror, or it's the meadow plate there. So as a fire type, you definitely don't want to take an earth power from Landorus. Oh, Rillaboom, that'll be a swap out. Bring Landorus on to the field at this point as Heat Crash from the Gouging Fire targeting into the Landorus. One HP survival, but the earth power into the freshly swapped in Landorus is going to do nothing. The survival, but for what? Parting shot into the Gouging Fire will bring it back below one. Shan Pao will be forced to come in, but still great play coming out. The highs and lows of competitive Pokemon. You make the call, you switch your flying type into the Earth Power, and you think you get the knockout, but Brady survives at one HP. And great coverage coming out from James, knowing that, hey, maybe if you miss that KO, you can still be swapping in to make sure that your Rillaboom is gonna be safe and preserve a part of this team. The lander is now on one HP. I mean, you can just be absolutely KO'd from the Gouging Fire to start with the potential of something like a Breaking Swipe, or even if you just leave the Landorus alone, which I don't think you want to do in this case, <laughs> you still have the priority move in the back to be taking care of it down the line. Chien Pao, at this point, the Ghost Rastalization can't be hit by the Fake Out, but you still need to be doing as much damage as you can right now. Well, Breaking Swipe makes a lot of sense because it's a spread attack into a 1 HP Landers and a Focus Sass Chien Pao. So either way, if this Lander stays or stays around, you're going to knock it out. And if the Chien Pao sticks around, you'd be able to break that Focus Sass. But with that Ghost Typing, that means it's not going to be threatened by any super effective attacks on this turn. Incineroar is going to try to come in to eat a potential Breaking Swipe. And it means that Brady so much values his 1 HP Landers that he wants to save it for later. Lander is swapping out for James's end as well. Both players preserving as Rillaboom going to be coming back out. Make sure if there is the Icicle Crash into the slot that it's not going to be doing the damage that Brady is so desperately looking for on this turn. And Grassy Surge as well. So priority Grassy Strike here. Breaking Swipe, that'll be breaking the Sash for the Chien Pao. Critical hit on the Incineroar still does just a little bit of damage. But importantly too, that, in, that attack drop coming out. Icicle Crash, again, Great heads up play from James. This is doing so little damage. Two fire types on the field against Chien Pao. So those icicle crashes are in a difficult position. Also importantly, since Brady's lander is swapped out first, that means Rillaboom has entered the field unintimidated with grassy terrain on the field. If 
James is able to get rid of Tian Pao, who currently has the only way of outspeeding with priority attacks. Then the, real, the lander is at one HP. It doesn't matter what real boom speed stat is because as long as Grassy Terrain is on the field, the Grassy Glide would be able to secure that last hit point. Fake out into the Incineroar on this turn and Howl from the Gouging Fire. Another opportunity to just raise the attack for these Pokemon after that Intimidate coming out from the Incineroar the turn before. Icicle Crash will be hitting into the Gouging Fire this time around, but for a move that has so much power, it's just doing so little in this situation. That Fire Dragon typing is actually a very strong defensive typing. You might not think of it initially if you're just looking at it in a vacuum, but with how the metagame plays out, those Ice Attacks are only neutral. Fairy Attacks are, are only neutral, right? The only things you have to really worry about are like a Rock Slide or Earth Power, which obviously Landorus has in the back. But for right now, James's Gouging Fire is sitting pretty Two fire types on the field against an ice type and a fire type means that these howls are so effective because the more you howl, the more damage you can do to Chien Pao. And you talked about at the beginning of the match, there is no speed control going on. And when you're looking at James's end, the speed that this Gouging Fire has and acting first all this time around keeps outspeeding the Pokemon to Brady's end and just lowering this more and more. The miss and the taunt from the Rillaboom, no parting shots coming out from Brady on this turn, no chance to try and lower what James can do at this point with the attempt. Yeah, parting shot is stopped, so that negates the chance at lowering the howls, but also it stops the Landorus getting back onto the field for free at the end of the turn. Now Incineroar has to sit here, and you see Brady decides this is wrapped up. There's nothing I can do. Uh, there is nothing I can do, honestly. We talked about in that top four match that Brady was the one setting the pace and it looked like he tried to this match, but James was step in step with him and just one step ahead at some point. Some really, really great switches over on James's end to make sure that Brady can never quite take control of the battle as he would have liked. Yeah, that was a great display from James here in game one. We'll see what Brady can do to adjust, but just understanding his win conditions, knowing that the gouging fire was way more important than the Ogre Pond Wellspring. Sure, it's kind of, kind of baiting the attacks into the Wellspring to let that get knocked out. And then through the, the help of Terra Fire, Rillaboom, and Howl and Breaking Swipe on this really fast gouging fire, thanks to the booster energy, it's really tough for Brady to deal with when he doesn't have super effective hits into those slots. Looking at like mid of that battle, some of the plays that James were making here, I think was just super, super well done to make sure he was ahead. We got to see that heat crash coming out, but missing the KO, but anticipating that, hey, I don't know if I get this KO or not, swapping in the Landorus. You get the Landorus in for free and also covering for the Earth Power. That could have been a devastating hit into the Rillaboom that had proved so useful in the match. And all of a sudden, it's completely safe. It was just so well done at this point. This is the turn. One HP survival, but for what? Brady was never able to get that Landorus back in safe again. And both of both James and Brady, their Landorus were able to, to survive the whole match when they're on the field for a very long time. I think it's actually impressive that the Landorus Incarnate is such a big threat that you almost want to target all of your aggression into that slot. And for it to be able to, to, to stick around for the entire match means that they know when to protect properly, substitute properly, and swap it out at the right time. So I think this could be a case uh, since there's so many similar Pokemon, right? Both Rillaboom or Terra Fire, they both have Landorus Incarnate. There's so many things that whoever can protect their Landorus the best might come out on top. And at this point with game 1-1, one, one, James Evan is just one match away from becoming regional champion. Can he close this out? Landorus Ogre Pond to be leading the charge on his end, going up against an adjustment from Brady, Raging Bolt and Rillaboom. So this is the adjustment with Raging Bolt coming in game two. That means that Brady has left something else at home from the game one. Rillaboom on the other side has the assault vest, so it's not worried about getting knocked out from a sludge bomb from the Landorus Incarnate on the other side. Arguably, James has to really wonder which targets do you want to go for? Is it the Earth Power into the Raging Bolt or sludge bomb into a Rillaboom? And of course, because Brady has Fake Out, the only Pokemon with Fake Out on this turn, he can try to stop Landorus from even attacking in general. But when you have Grassy Terrain on the field and Leftovers Raging Bolt, we saw how strong this was against Scott in top four. Those calm minds can, that might be the best way to match the Howl gouging fire on the other side. Ogre Pond on this turn, swap out Rillaboom, gonna be joining the battle. So it has fake out pressure on this next turn. This Landorus will be safe past that this time around. So this could be opportunity for something here. Fake out 
just keeping that honest here. But if the Raging Bolt went for a Calm Mind, as it will, that is going to be one raised stage of the special attack and the special defense. And now the momentum has somewhat switched, at least on the fake out pressure to James's side since he has swapped his real room in on this turn. But Raging Bolt getting the special defense increase for free without taking damage is absolutely crucial because even if you take a super effective hit from Landorus or if you decide to uh, play it play it cheeky and Terrasse slides into the fairy type calling an earth power, that means you're going to be taking so much less damage there because of just one Calm Mind boost. And you're going to recover even more up at the end of the turn from Leftovers and Grassy Terrain. When you're looking at the Landorus over on James's end of the field, it's so threatening. You have to protect the Raging Bolt this turn, but you can't do any damage into James's end with the Faco coming out onto the Rillaboom. And it's just going to be AIDS going on this time around of being in to protect and not getting too much done. Yeah, nothing happening there. So two turns with two ineffective fake outs from both James and Brady. And now we're back to square one, essentially, with the two Rillabooms on the field. They're going to have to go for a specific attack, either the U-turn on Brady's end to get some, some switching potential on his side, or maybe even trying to go for Grassy Glides or a Wood Hammer into that lander slot. It looks like Brady is kind of wa wavering back and forth on if you terrestrialize the Raging Bolt this turn. But if James calls it and expects the very typing he could go for sludge bomb well at this point too both trainers have played with so much respect towards each other and this can be a huge call in at this moment and center swapping in for the rillaboom so in the next turn around you will have the fake out pressure over on brady's end of things but it's all going to be the call even after the terrestrialization and earth power into the slot since it's not a salt vest will still do a lot of damage and with the Raging Bolt terrestrializing into a fairy type, that means James did not Terra on this turn. So it's only going to be this Raging Bolt losing the Dragon and Electric to become a pure fairy type. Earth Power into the slot. It's going to be dealing just about half damage here, but the follow-up would hammer into it. Will it be enough? No! 2 HP survival coming on out from the Raging Bolt. Now, opportunity. Fire off a Dragon Ball into the Landorus. It gets the hold on, but still so much damage done. What I love about that turn from Brady is he had Rillaboom and Raging Bolt next to each other. Conventional wisdom is Rillaboom's weak to Sludge Bomb and Raging Bolt is weak to Earth Power. So he swaps Incineroar, who's weak to Earth Power, into the Rillaboom slot and then changes the typing of Raging Bolt so then it is not going to take as much damage. It hangs on at two, does so much to the Landorus that at any point, if Landorus does not protect in front of Brady's Rillaboom, he can use his priority to knock it out. And that's why we see the swap here. You have the fake out, you have the grassy glide. So much pressure onto James' end of the board and Raging Bolt protect. It is so low and you want to make sure the grassy glide isn't going to be picking it off. Looking towards the Landorus on this turn, it will be the Earth Power into that Rillaboom. It's not going to be doing too much damage. Great swap coming out from Brady. This is what Brady does every play of every round. He's one of the best players in the country at just content continuing to control the momentum. You have my Grass type here. I'm going to switch in the Fire type and not take super effective damage. I have the Fire type. Now I'm going to swap in my Grass type and your Earth Power. James, or Brady is able to do this so consistently that James is effectively waiting wasting turns into resisted attacks on his Pokemon. Raging Bolt swapping out such low health, and you want to make sure that you can have it maybe preserved for later and bring the Incineroar in to so fake out again potential on the next turn or to start pressuring into this Rillaboom. Intimidate as well to drop the attack of the Rillaboom by one stage. Landris as well, though not relevant. Grassy Glide into the Landris. will be picking up the KO there. First KO of the match. And now if Rillaboom goes for an attack into what was Raging Bolt, it's going to be the Incineroar. Who is this? Great switches coming out from Beatty here. Two turns in a row, not very effective hits due to the swapping this time around. And James, he has the opportunity for a switch here. The Ogre Pond, or we can see the fourth and final Pokemon that he has brought there. It will be Grassy Train that is expiring though, so no more Grassy Glides. Yeah, one of these two Rillabooms is gonna have to take one for the team and swap out and come back in to reset the grassy terrain. You could argue it's definitely Brady that would make the most sense to swap since he has access to U-turn. But James is going to bring his Ogre Pound Wellspring onto the field with conserve that information so that Brady is not aware of what that fourth Pokemon is. Last time around, it was Gouging Fire. 
Well, you're talking about U-turn as well, but looking at these two Rillabooms, the key difference is James has Taunt on his as opposed to that U-turn. So you only have grass coverage moves, neither of which are going to be faring well into the Pokemon that Brady currently has out on the field. So the Rillaboom on James's end, I mean, you can do a little bit of damage, but it isn't going to be too much. So this is where we are going to be seeing that swap. This will be the fourth final Pokemon, Gouging Fire, once again coming out. This has the potential to do a lot more than that Rillaboom could. Yeah, Landorus and Firewater Grass is your four Pokemon that you bring with your two, with your, you know, life on the line here. Makes total sense because they are such strong synergy together. Spiky Shield, make sure that potential fake out is not going to be doing too much and a little bit of chip return onto that Incineroar just as a little punishment. Don't come after me. But now Rillaboom can be firing off an attack, a chance to pivot. No damage really done into the Gouging Fire but you do have the chance to bring something back in and respond to the gouging fire that James has brought. Yeah, we could be in a bit of a lull on the next couple turns if there's going to be a lot of fake outs and protects and, and U-turns and, and, and swaps where both these players want to slow down the pace of the match. Brady will bring his Raging Bolt back on to the field, but look at how low it is. Look at, actually, remember, it, it, it hung on barely uh, from the previous attack and it's back into the yellow because of leftover on multiple turns. So if you protect here, if you try to swap your real boom back in so you can get both grassy terrain and protect eventually this ro this raging bolt can potentially go back up to even over half hp remaining especially too if you do just have these protects and bringing the rillaboom in the rillaboom having that fake out pressure over on his end you what you do have to look for is if brady is kind of passively playing to just keep swapping in and out try and get some health back on this raging bolt we can see a potential setup coming out from james's end of course this Gouging Fire does have the potential to be doing a lot, but you do need to be getting some Howls if you want to be dealing that significant damage that's going to be bringing you through. And it's going to be tough for James to decide which of his Pokemon he wants to terrestrialize in this matchup. Obviously, Ogrepan Wellspring would not enjoy clicking, being hit by a Thunderclap. You can see James, yes, there for a second. Did he call the swap in? One of the moves that Gouging Fire has is the Heat Crash. He could be targeting into it to try and deal with it, especially with the Raging Bolt going for the Protect this time around. And if you want to take advantage here, this is where we have to see those heads up play. Heat Crash into the Rillaboom, enough to be taking the KO. This is what you have to do to break through Brady's defense. You have to make predictions. You have to be aggressive and go on the offensive, calling the switch. Brady has shown you time and time again, about four or five turns in a row, I will swap the Pokemon that resists the biggest threat. So James is saying, all right, I'm going to call your bluff and the Heat Crash and get rid of your Rillaboom. And the potential double into that anyways with that Ivy Cudgel, just accounting for whatever is going to be happening here. But now Incineroar being forced back out onto the field. And the Raging Bolt, since it did protect last turn around, is susceptible to being hit by a powerful attack from either of the Gouging Fire or the Ogre Pond. And Incineroar can only stop one of the minute tracks. Yeah, and anytime if you don't fake out the Gouging Fire, you can click Howl, which, which the Howl is going to reset your attack from the initial drop from Intimidate on Incineroar's end. So James is in a pretty strong spot with effectively two full health Pokemon. I know Gouging Fire took a little bit of chip there, but two full health Pokemon. He's able to click Howl. He's really not too threatened at a uh, one-hit knockout on this turn and try to boost up the attack stat on both of these physical attackers. Then you also have Rillaboom in the back, for whenever Raging Bolt gets low, for when Qian Pao's sash is broken, you have Grassy Glide. Fake out into the Ogre Pond, a howl from the Gouging Fire, bringing up to neutral the attack of both of these Pokemon. They'll be the flinch for the Ogre Pond, of course, and Dragon Balls coming out, getting into this Pokemon, just doing a good amount of damage into it. But now, James, there's no fake out, so now he can be pressuring a lot. Yeah, the, the howl is doubly effective, right? Onto both Ogre Pond and the physical attacker in Gouging Fire. So how many times do you want to set up? Does James feel confident enough right now to just go for damage? On, as we mentioned, Raging Bolt already back up into the green when it barely, it almost got knocked out and it's actually super healthy yet again. Is the one howl enough to mitigate the Intimidate or do you want to keep boosting those attacks so potential critical hit Ivy Cudgel can just straight up win you the game? And looking at the thunderclap, ready an attack from the Ogre Pond. That will be enough. It'll get to act first, being that priority to take care of that Pokemon. Now, James down to two. Howl again from the Gouging Fire, only getting to set up itself this time around. 
is just going to be back at neutral yet again after that parting shot. And now Brady gets the swap, and maybe that is the momentum that he needs on this turn. Yeah, James is in distress after that turn where the Thunderclap mind games went in Brady's favor. It is a neutral hit into the water grass type Ogre Pond Wellspring, so it was low under half HP, more than enough for Raging Bolt with a massive special attack stat that it has to knock it out. And James cannot pivot around anymore. You're no longer able to save your Rillaboom for later. Eventually, this grassy terrain will run out and you cannot reset it. So he's, James is going to have to take advantage of it while he has it. At least Gouging Fire does have one Howl boost because of clicking it two turns in a row and then the one parting shot lowering it down. But the question is, James, does he even want to Terrasize with one of these two Pokemon here with these last two turns of grassy terrain? Leave it at neutral. He had an initial Intimidate on it. But regardless, at this point, when you're looking at these two Pokemon, I think there's going to be a little bit of issues trying to get past the Incineroar, at least when you're looking at the Rillaboom over on James's end. So if you're looking for the damage output, you need to start seeing it sooner rather than later. Chan Pao joining the field. This is a chance to try and get some output damage now. Yeah, and the gouging, the gouging fire, as you mentioned, is probably your best way. One, it can uh, go for spread attacks. If you're able to get rid of Raging Bolt, then you can try to do Breaking Swipe into both Chien Pao and Incineroar. But of course, currently, Raging Bolt would be immune to those Breaking Swipes as a fairy type. This is where Brady with his team can. We saw all game long he is not afraid of switching. And yet again, Intimidate for both of these Pokemon is going to do so well. And James, sure, you have the Howl, but there's only so many turns you can do that if you're slowly losing momentum and getting chipped away. So you have to just start attacking and dealing with that. Trasalization on the Rillaboom. Make sure that, hey, defensive wise, you are not going to be taking potentially huge damage from like maybe an Icicle Crash or a Flare Blitz coming out. Raging Bolt, protect this turn. Yeah, gonna be just continue to recover HP. By the time the grassy terrain ends, it will be almost full HP if it just continues to protect and use leftovers. That'll be the breaking swipe this time around, coming out from Gouging Fire. Of course, immunity from the Raging Bolt, since it is that fairy crystallization or Incineroar, that'll be one stage of lowered attack and just chipping away at it. Yeah, the two Intimidates and the Parting Shot into the Gouging Fire means that James is now minus one on the attack. Those two Howls have been negated. He's not going to be as strong as he would like. Now you have your Terra Fire Rillaboom that helps against Chien Power, helps against Incineroar, but it does nothing to stop a Thunderclap or a Dragon Pulse coming out from the Raging Bolt. You would be taking the full brunt of the damage. This is also the last turn of Grassy Terrain, so if you want to take advantage of the Grassy Glide while you have it, or maybe a Wood Hammer, into this fairy type on the Raging Bolt. Maybe try to go for a critical hit or as much damage as possible to stop this uh, Raging Bolt, who did just protect the prior turn. Well, this is where the fake out from Incineroar is going to be coming oh so handy, making sure that we won't get another opportunity for that Rillaboom to use a priority attack is Howl from the Gouging Fire to try and bring these Pokemon back to neutral one more time. Try and make sure you can do the damage that you need. Dragon Pulse hitting into the Rillaboom. It will get a little bit of recovery from that last turn of grassy terrain. But at this point, the Pokemon on Brady's end, they're just not really getting damaged these last few turns. I mean, it's remarkable how well Brady has played this game that the Raging Bolt was been single digit health and is effectively full HP at this point. Will be full HP if they do protect and then use their leftovers recovery. So Brady has been able to slow the pace of this game to an absolute crawl, which that's not what James wanted. He wanted fast, hard hitting attacks from Landorus, potential howl boosted hits from his Ogre Pond, and he has not been able to make that happen in game two. Swap yet again from Brady, Chien Pao, and then we're in the back for a potential swap in yet again on the next turn around. And at this point, too, Thunderclap attempting for a hit, but a fail Might, must be ready up a taunt instead. Gouging fire for the Howl. Sure, maybe this game is at a snail's pace, but James still insistent on trying to speed it up. Taunt into the Chien Pao, tempting to try into the Incineroar. But at this point, the Chien Pao probably will swap, but it does mean that it can't at least protect. Yeah, you know, Incineroar loves to switch in on positions like that. And there it is, everybody. Raging Bolt back up to full HP when it was almost completely knocked out earlier on in the match. Chien Pao probably wants to swap to keep that Focus Sash. Rillaboom's already at half health. You taunted into what was the Incineroar to stop a potential parting shot. But now that there's no reason to taunt either of Brady's Pokemon, a Thunderclap would work if Rillaboom goes for an attack. 
can still just try and taunt into that slot, calling a swap, but more importantly, making sure that you're never ready enough an attack so you can try and deal some damage other ways with that gouging fire. So you're not going to get risk KO'd from a Thunderclap. As Incineroar will be swapping in this turn yet again, another round of Intimidate. So difficult to try and get these Pokemon underway. The Rillaboom did try to go for it this time around. It will be KO'd. Thunderclap coming on out. And now it was gouging fire against the world in this gouging fire. I don't think it has enough steam in the tank. Yeah, he crashed into the Raging Bolt, but it is full HP, and you see through so many Intimidates just how little damage. Of course, Raging Bolt is also a pretty big boy, too, so you're not going to be doing too much damage into uh, that there. But we have not had a Game 3 all of Top 8 in Vancouver, and it looks like we are going to get that here in the finals. Raging Bolt was such a good answer into this Gouging Fire, considering the Heat Crash is just not doing the damage that it needs, considering the... Considering that, yeah, as you said, the Raging Bolt, that is a that is a big dino Pokemon over here. <laughs> and then just never being allowed to try and get some Howl Boost to just be able to offer some more Pokemon from James. Brady did a really good job at constantly cycling those Intimidate, constantly with those parting shots, and just isolating this Gouging Fire to where it can't do what it needs to at this point. Burning Bulwark, protecting itself through this turn of attacks. Dragon Falls coming on out. James, at this point, you're just thinking, what can I do for game three? Right, exactly. Maintain your composure. You know that this game is wrapped up, so let me protect. I use bull, you know, Raging Bulwark effectively the same here. Give me extra time to think for adjustments in game three, and we can, you know, we can start to articulate our thoughts. The big adjustment for Brady was Raging Bolt. So now James is the one on the back foot. James has to be the one that you thought this these four Pokemon he brought were gonna be so strong because they were so effective in game one for him. But even, you know, bringing the same strategy multiple times against Brady or other great trainers, it's hardly going to work out. So now James has to make the adjustment to handle Brady's Raging Bolt in game three. Well, James has just under three minutes of trying to figure out at this point as we did see the timer play on the screen a testament of how long this match has gone on and a testament to how well brady has played this to make sure that james evan simply cannot play the game dragon falls finally going to be ending this off gouge and fire falls and brady to take game two to take us into game three this is all we can ask for sierra game three between two of the best trainers in north america james trying to get his first regional championship in the masters division and brady trying to get his first regional in almost five years this is going to be so important it looks like james has really locked in he's honed on those four pokemon leaving king gambit and fluttermane home in both of the first two games do you need the fluttermane to try try to out damage the Raging Bolt. Well, I'm even curious about the King Gambit and just the fact that during that entire game, you saw the Intimidate cycling constantly. The biggest, uh, hey, you can't do that anymore, is a King Gambit with that Defiant. So you would be punishing Brady for the amount of swaps that he has, especially with the Terra, the Terra Dragon. That's actually going to be resisting a lot of hits on the opposing end. Sure, there's still Pokemon to be scared of, like the Chien Pao, but if you have other ways to be dealing with it, that could be an adjustment you can look at going on to this next game. Well, yeah, the King Gambit with Terra Dragon, that could be an interesting dynamic on how it matches up against Raging Bolt, because as, as a Steel type, as it's normal typing, you love taking Dragon pulses from the Raging Bolt, and if you turn into a Dragon type, then you love taking the Thunderclaps on the other side from it, so that could be some real big mind games, but I don't know if I want to get into a, a mind game heavy war against Brady in game three, because it seemed like even in the moment when James made that huge call of swapping Landorus in and almost getting the knockout on Raging Bolt, Brady maintained his composure and brought that back and made a very convincing victory in game two. Yeah, even if there is no swap coming out from James, something like that Landorus can do a lot of damage. It just needs to be positioned a little bit better to be able to actually pressure into Brady's team. Because looking at the four Pokemon that he brought, Landorus thrives against all of them, just not given that opportunity in the final match. Brady played it really, really well to make sure that Pokemon was neutralized before he was able to just fully set up and just again, set the pace of the match the way that he wanted to. So if James does want to be sticking to the same four, that Landorus needs to be better preserved this time around, whether it maybe stays in the back and try and get through some of Brady's like starting Pokemon that way, but you need some sort of change. Yeah, and James has the Meadow Plate on Rillaboom for a reason, so it might be time to use it. You need really strong wood hammers, boosting your damage of your grass type attacks. If you can get Rillaboom and Landorus on the field at the same time, the Raging Bolt cannot take wood hammer and earth power. 
but it's time to get into game three here, the Vancouver Regional Finals. Fluttermane will be the adjustment of choice coming out from James. Not the only one though, or Shifu to make an appearance here in the Grand Finals as well. If you're so annoyed at getting faked out every turn, then bring your ghost type in that cannot get hit by the fake out. Choice specs, Fluttermane does some of the most damage in the metagame. Or Shifu was a nice adjustment for Brady as well, because I don't know if James was expecting that. Especially too, and we're looking at this or Shifu coming out from Brady. This isn't the Terra Water do damage, but instead the Terra Steel to make sure that you are not going to be getting hit by a super effective Moonblast coming out on the opposing end. Or Grassy and, Glide. Yeah, and right out the gate, we will see that Terra Steel or Shifu to make sure defensively you are set so offensively you can thrive. And the Choice Scarf essentially works as pseudo speed control because now you're going to be moving faster when you're not fake out it, of course. You're going to be moving faster than everybody else. I'll have to save till next turn, delaying that until later. But Shadow Ball into it to cover for the Trasalization, doing a lot of damage. Woodhammer for Rillaboom, though, into the Flutterbane to bring it right down low. It hangs on. If he had Meadow Play instead of AV, it would have been enough to knock out. That is the intricate difference between these teams. By having Assault Vest, you're able to endure those Moonblasts better, but you do just a little bit less damage than James's Meadow Play, which would have been enough to knock out. So what has helped Brady get to this spot in the finals might be the downfall that he just barely missed the KO on this Choice Specs Fluttermane. At least her Shifu has the Choice Scarf, so you know that Fluttermane is not necessarily in a great spot to stay on the field right now, since the Scarf would mean that it can outspeed the Fluttermane. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's the priority galore over on Brady's end of the field. So the Flutter main, if you want it to be sticking around, you need to be swapping it out here and now. Bring it back in later and hopefully bring in a Pokemon that can be resisting the hit that Brady's throwing your way. But no, just willing to say that, hey, I've had enough with this Flutter main. It did what it needed to do, dealt some damage and get a free swap in for the next turn. It's going to be have to be what it is for now. Woodhammer from Rillaboom over on James's end. Not very effective, but with the Metal Plate and the help of the Grassy Train is still going to be doing a nice chunk to the Rillaboom that's doing a lot less even with that super effective U-turn. Yeah, so I guess James wanted to call a potential switch into uh, maybe Raging Bolt or something else in the back and do Wood Hammer, but instead he just does the resisted damage to Rillaboom. Now Brady is able to get his Raging Bolt in at full HP for free on the field. I like that he that James just let Fluttermane go down because he's not using it as a Terra Hog in this match. Most people will just try to Terrastalize Fluttermane, get a quick Moon Blast and get knocked out. Now you can save the Terra for later on the Gouging Fire. Gouging Fire's Terra is actually Fairy, which would mean it's immune to the Dragon Pulses on Raging Bolt's side. So we'll see if James is gonna prioritize the Fairy typing for Gouging Fire or to turn Boom into a Fire type, which he has done for the first two games. And that's exactly the call you have to make, because sure, you did it into the fire type the first two games, but you also are going to be so weak to the Surgeon Strike, the adjustment over on Brady's end of the field. So I doesn't feel safe. I think you would rather have the raises go in at least for this time around, though. But looking at this, it also seems like a prime spot for Brady to go for one of those, and then bring in and intimidate, lure the attack over on James's end. And if you are Brady, you probably anticipate that Ogre Pond Wellspring was left at home because Landorus Incarnate is so valuable in this matchup. But until that information is revealed, you have to play around both outs. I can't imagine that James would allow his Flutter main to perish like that if he had a Wellspring Ogre Pond in the back. So I think with how pivotal Landorus has been, holding it in the back for later, Heat Crash into what was that Steel type. It's gonna be denying it. But now Taunt into the Raging Bolt. No Calm Minds, no Protects. It can go on the offensive though. Dragon Balls, not enough to deal with the Rillaboom. And now with that Taunt, as you mentioned, you can't click Calm Mind, which means Brady is very inclined to click Thunderclap, which would help it with priority attacks. James, it's much easier for him to play around the Thunderclap if he is expecting it to come. Even if Rillaboom resists Electric, it's at such low HP anyway that the Thunderclap would be enough to knock it out. Gouging Fire, of course, resisting as well since it is a Dragon type. So Brady has two choices here. You can either Thunderclap or you can Dragon Pulse or you can try to swap out to negate that taunt earlier. But all it means is that Brady's probably going to have a more defensive turn and maybe using the Incineroar to have more support with, you know, uh, trying to lower their attacks, continually intimidate, continue the parting shots onto James's Pokemon. 
at this point. Burning Bulwark over on the Gouging Fire. Make sure it's not going to be taking a powerful attack this time around. As Fake Out into the Rillaboom, not enough to be picking up the KO that time around, but will deny it from an opportunity to act and allow this Raging Bolt to just fire off a Dragon Pulse there. So now it'll be a free swap for James to see that fourth and final Pokemon. Yeah, he's down to his last two Pokemon. He doesn't need the Grassy Terrain anymore since the real Boom has been knocked out. But of course, Brady can reset the train whenever he wants to when, it is a, when it's over because he has his own real Boom left. It's the Landorus Incarnate and the Gouging Fire left for James, two of the most important Pokemon. Gouging Fire has come so close so many times, multiple second place finishes at regionals this season. James is trying to get that Gouging Fire the W. Looking at this Landorus now, the ways that could possibly be pressuring into this, because you know this Raging Bolt, if left unchecked, can be an issue, but it is a Raging Bolt that cannot be protecting at this time around. So with that, it will be a Raging Bolt that is swapping out bringing a different Pokemon in, or Shifu, to join back onto the field. Since it has Terrastalize, it still will be a Pokemon that can take a lot of damage from the Earth Power, but double swap from Brady. Yeah, now you bring that Terra Steel or Shifu back onto the field. Since Brady has the advantage, the Pokemon count advantage, you might as well take and to use it while you can. Or Shifu's done its job. Or Shifu was there to outspeed Fluttermane and get that knockout. So you're done with that. It's way more important to keep Rillaboom and Incineroar around safe in the back so you can continue to intimidate Cycle. Earth Power going into the Rillaboom. Not very effective hit. Not going to be doing the much, bringing the Rillaboom down real low. That will be the grassy terrain eliminated from the field, though, as Raging Bolt being brought back out onto the field. Since Trasalization has been used for Brady, this Raging Bolt can be taking a lot of damage coming out from a potential Earth Power. So you do have to be careful for that, and you have to be cycling your fake out Pokemon so well at this point. This Raging Bolt and Gouging Fire coming out in the same DLC with each other at the same time. It's such a cool interaction to see these two tra Dragon types going at it in the finals here in Vancouver. They both have access to Dragon attacks right now that they could go for, and they have access to setup with Howl and Calm Mind. Do you try to match each other's setup, or you just go for raw damage? No attempt to protect on the Landorus. Howl's going to be raising just that attack for the Gouging Fire. Does do the Landorus, but negated at this point since it is that special attacker. Landorus, it will be flinching this time around and Raging Bolt going for the Calm Mind. Brady set himself up well so that, James, you could not attack this turn with that Landorus. If you were passive on that Gouging Fire, that you would get directly punished for it. And as setting up Raging Bolt is a scary Raging Bolt. At least you do know on James's end that this Raging Bolt cannot terrestrialize, right? Has to keep that Earth Power weakness since Urshifu ate up the terrestrialization earlier on in the game. So you don't have to play Earth Power Sludge Bomb mind games. As long as James has his landers here and is able to attack if he's given the chance, he can try to do as much damage as he can onto that Calm Mind boosted Raging Bolt. And Cinemar swapping in yet again, just trying to make sure that the Gouging Fire can be kept in check this time around. It does have the breaking swipe, so if it wants to start trying to just start dealing some damage at any point, it can and it will. So little into these Pokemon, though, at this point. It will be dropping from Incineroar. That's about it. But you see, James, you see this hope. Is Earth Power going to be enough? And it will! Raging Bolt is going to fall just down final two Pokemon for Brady as well. Calm Mind means nothing against Life Orb, Sheer Force, Landers Incarnate. One of the strongest special attackers in all of Pokemon and breaking through all of that HP has brought this game back to a two to two slot with now you have Gouging Fire at full HP. Brady's just gonna throw in the towel. He knows with the Raging Bolt gone, the chance is gone as well. And with that, James Evan to claim victory here in the finals of Vancouver, become a regional champion. Such an accomplished list of titles he has earned, but regional champion here in the master division for the first time, and it was so well deserved. What an excellent best of three between James and Brady. Brady being an excellent sport as well.